Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I wanted to do a little lesson on mixed linear in circles today. Um, so this is something, so there's a lot of problems that I solved uh, previously and some of them took me a little while. And I didn't know much about mixed linear in circles, but then I would read the um, solutions to other posters on the forum and a lot of them would end up using this, even in problems where it didn't even seem to initially be related to it. Um, so it seems like it's a very useful concept, and so I've started to learn more about it lately. Um, Evan Chen has a very nice handout on it, and there's also a book called uh, A Beautiful Journey Through Olympiad Geometry, um, and that also has a very nice chapter on it. Um, so I wanted to cover two of the main theorems in it. Um, so I'm going to start with a problem, and um, if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so we have the triangle ABC uh, with circumcircle omega, and there's another circle um, tangent to AB, AC, and omega um, that has center O. So this is called the A mixed to linear in circle. Um, so F, G, and T are the points of tangency to AB, AC, and um, omega, and we wanna show that the midpoint of F, G is the in center of triangle ABC. So this is, seems to me like a very surprising theorem. Um, kind of comes out of nowhere, but says something fairly significant. So I'm gonna follow the exposition in um, the book, the second book I mentioned, uh, Beautiful Journey Through Olympiad Geometry. Um, so first we're gonna start by letting I be the in center of triangle ABC. And we want to show that I is in fact the midpoint of FG. Uh, so how do we do that? Um, so I'm going to start first um, by um, taking the lines through BI and CI and seeing where they meet the circumcircle. And I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this. Uh, first of all, it's, it's convenient to do it in general um, because uh, the angle bisector of angle B always meets the arc AC at the midpoint. So, so D is the midpoint of arc AC. Uh, I've mentioned that many times on my channel, and that's because equal angles intercept equal arcs. Um, and then we can do the same with um, extending CI to meet the circumcircle of E. And so um, D is the midpoint of arc AC and E is the midpoint of arc AB. Now, why did I do this? Well, the midpoint of an arc has a special property that uh, when you draw the tangent to it, that tangent line is parallel to the um, chord between the two endpoints of the arc. So basically the, the tangent to E, the tangent at E to omega is parallel to AB, and the tangent at D uh, similarly is parallel to AC. And so that will come in handy later. Um, so some people are familiar with homothetes, so maybe a kind of advanced concept, but they'll recognize that if, um, since omega and the mixed the linear in the circle are both tangent at T, uh, if the tangents at F and E to the two circles are parallel, then they'll see immediately that E, F, and T are collinear. Uh, but I don't think it's that obvious, so I'm gonna go prove it out here. Um, okay, so like I said, the tangent uh, to the circle O through point E is parallel to AB. Um, so I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw that tangent, and I'm also gonna draw the tangent to both of these two circles through T. Okay, and I'm gonna let those meet at point H. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna extend line AB to meet uh, the tangent through T at a point J. Uh, so why am I doing this? Um, so I wanna leverage the fact that AB is parallel to this tangent at E. Uh, so that's one reason why. And also uh, we have lots of tangents to circles. So we have a tangent to to circle omega at E, we have a tangent at F, and we have a tangent at T. 
and intersection points of any two tangents uh, are equidistant to both circles. So I'm going to try to leverage that fact here. And that's, that's kind of why I got them all to intersect. Um, so ultimately, I want to show that EF and T are collinear. Okay. Um, but since the tangents to the two tangents from any point to a circle are equal, um, JTF is isosceles and EHT is isosceles. Um, so showing that those three points are collinear um, is essentially the same as showing that they're similar isosceles triangles. Um, but that's true because uh, since AB is parallel to the tangent at E, um, we'd have to have angle uh, THE is equal to angle TJF. So those two isosceles triangles would have to be uh, similar, and so EFT have to be collinear. Uh, so I'm going to write that out a little bit. Um, so like I mentioned, uh, JF is equal to JT, uh, HE is equal to HT, so they're both isosceles triangles. Also, uh, angle TJF is equal to angle THE because uh, those two lines, AB and EH, are parallel. And so if you have two isosceles triangles and um, not the vertex angle, but uh, two of the base angles are the same, then the two isosceles triangles have to be similar. Um, so if TJF is equal to TJF, he, we'd also have to have JTF is equal to uh, HTE. So I'm going to write that out. So J, angle JTF is equal to angle HTE, and obviously that means EF and T have to be collinear. Okay. Um, so I'm going to erase some of the work I did to show this and um, just draw the line through TF and E. So like I said, people familiar with homotheties will just recognize that right away. Um, that those three points would have to be collinear. And then by the same logic, T, G, and D would also have to be collinear. Um, so I'm going to draw that line. And I'm going to move the diagram a little bit because I don't want it to look like it passes through O because that's not necessarily true. Okay. So now this looks like a perfect chance to apply Pascal's theorem because we have all these points, all these six points intersecting each other. Um, if you take, so if you look at points E, A, and D, and how they correspond to B, T, and C, if you take each point and you connect it to the other two that it doesn't correspond to, so E gets connected to C and T, A gets connected to B and C, and D gets connected to B and T, and you take the three uh, intersection points, F, I, and G, by Pascal's theorem, they'd all have to be collinear. Um, so F, I, and G are those three intersection points and they're collinear. So we're almost there. So we wanted to show that the in center I is the midpoint of FG. Uh, so far we've shown that it lies on FG. So now that we know it lies on FG, how do we know it's the midpoint? And that's not too hard to see because um, AI is the angle bisector of BAC. Um, so it also has to be the ang angle bisector of FAG. Um, but if AI is the angle bisector of FAG, uh, we also know that uh, the tangents AF and AG are equal, um, it's very easy to see from that that FI has to equal IG. And so that proves the problem. Okay, so I just wrote that out here. So AF is equal to AG, and AI is an angle bisector of FAG. Um, so uh, because of that, um, for in, in any isosceles triangle, the angle bisector from the vertex is also the median. And so we have to have Fi is equal to Fg. And so I is the midpoint of Fg. And that solves the problem. So that's part one of this video, um, a really interesting theorem that I think is also called Verrier's theorem. But now I'm going to try to do a part two of it. So part two of this video, uh, I'm going to show that Ti uh, meets the arc BAC at its midpoint. All right, so that's a second fact about mixed linear in circles that's very interesting. Um, so I'm going to try to prove that. So I'm going to erase um, a couple, I'm going to erase the work I did um, and change the problem statement. So we want to show that TI passes through the midpoint of arc BAC. How do we do that? 
All right, so here's where it gets kind of interesting. Um, so if you look at triangle TFG, uh, TI is the median of that triangle. And also, uh, if you take the circumcircle of TFG, the tangents at F and G meet at point A. So there's a very well-known theorem. I don't think I've ever proven it on my channel before, but it comes in handy all the time. I, I feel like I've used it before on my channel. Um, so maybe someday later I'll create a video on it. But if you have this configuration where a triangle TFG and you take the two tangents at F and G to the circumcircle, uh, TA has to be a semedian from T in the triangle TFG. So what does that mean? That means that if you take TI, which is the median, and you reflect it over the angle bisector of FTG, then you would get uh, line TA. So I'm going to write some of this out. Um, so first I'm going to let TI meet the circumcircle at a point K. So we want to show that K is the midpoint of arc BAC. Um, and like I mentioned, TI is a median of triangle TFG. Um, so by that theorem, TA is the uh, semedian. So because the tangents to, to the circumcircle of that triangle meet at A, uh, TA is the semedian. So it's uh, symmetric to TK with respect to the angle bisector of TFG. And so due to that symmetry, since they're both reflections over the angle bisector, uh, we have to have angle FTI is equal to angle GTA. All right. So what do we do from here? Um, well, angle GTA is equal to angle DTA. So I'm going to do a little angle chase here. So we have FTI is equal to GTA. Uh, GTA is equal to DTA, and DTA is equal to DBA, um, and DBA uh, is equal to FBI. Uh, so we've shown that angle FTI is equal to angle FBI. So if angle FTI is equal to angle FBI, then that means uh, quadrilateral FBTI has to be cyclic. Uh, okay, so that's kind of interesting. That's another cool property of uh, this configuration. And then by the same logic, uh, GC, G, or GITC would have to be cyclic. Um, so we have two cyclic quadrilaterals here. So how do we leverage that? So ultimately, we wanted to show that K is the midpoint of our BAC. And so that would be the same as showing that angle BTK is equal to angle CTK because equal angles intercept equal arcs. Um, but we know FITB is cyclic. So angle BTK has to be angle BTI in that cyclic quadrilateral. And that's equal to the um, exterior angle of the opposite vertex. So that would be equal to angle AFI. Um, so I'm going to write this out, but the problem can be solved just by an angle chase from here on. Um, so we have angle BTK is equal to angle BTI, which is equal to angle AFG, um, because that's the exterior angle of uh, vertex F in quadrilateral FITB. And angle AFG is equal to angle AGF. That's because the tangents from A to the circumcircle, or the tangents from A to the mixed linear in the circle are equal. And so AFG is isosceles. So AFG is equal to angle AGF. And then um, running the logic in reverse, since GITC is cyclic, um, AGF, that's the exterior angle of uh, vertex G in that cyclic quadrilateral. So that has to equal angle CTI. And CTI is obviously CTK. So we've shown that angle BTK is equal to angle CTK. And so therefore, K has to be the midpoint of arc uh, BAC of omega. And that solves the problem. Um, so TI has to pass through that midpoint of arc BAC. 
Um, so this is a really nice configuration. Um, there's a lot of cool properties you, you can find once you've constructed these mixed linear in circles. Um, so I hope that in the future I'll be able to post more videos using it. Um, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.